Hey guys, there are plenty of chairs over here. If it just would be easy if you come over. Otherwise, I have to stand here and do this. And I'm really just looking. There's a mirror right here, and I'm just going to talk to myself and gaze longingly into my own eyes. Um, so come on in. This side, there's still plenty of chairs. We'd love to have you. Um, so for those who don't know me or haven't had a chance to meet you, I'd love to meet you. Uh, my name is Matt Pierce. I work for a company called TechSmith, which everyone looks at me like, I think I should know that name, but I don't. But you probably know us for Snagit and Camtasia. Those are tools that my company makes. Um, I'm not going to be talking about those. If you want to talk about those products, cool. Catch me afterwards. Um, I love to talk about them, but just not in the session. But what we are going to talk about is uh, uses for video. When I got a message last week, I was in country and traveling around visiting with customers, and they're like, oh, do you want to do another session? And I, I have a problem where I, I uh, have a hard time saying no, especially when it comes to, to speaking. I, this is something I actually, it's like being on a roller coaster for me. It's, I get a really kind of this visceral, like, oh, wow, that's really fun and cool. Um, hopefully it's good for you guys. But then I thought, well, what am I going to present about? And I you know, looked at a couple of my presentations I've given in the past and said, well, those were good. I could do that. But that would be the easy way to do it. And so I decided to actually come up with a whole new presentation just for this conference, all about video uses. Because I think we've talked about, at least in previous years when I've been here, I know I've talked about tips of making better video. Yesterday I talked about what video, like, uh, from a research study that we did about what viewers actually want from video in terms of length and attributes. But what I thought is what we haven't talked about, maybe as, as a, a profession even, is what are the uses for video that we're gonna, that make sense for us? And so what I hope this is, is a little bit of conversation and a lot of ideas. And it, some of the ideas are probably gonna overlap and you're gonna say, well, that's, isn't that the, sort of the same thing? Yeah, probably is. But what I find is a, a lot of times, as I'm talking to people, they're like, oh, oh, that's a different context. I didn't know I could do it for that context. Makes sense for here, but why? I didn't know about this other thing. So, um, and if you guys have ideas, we can add. I will, I will tell you a little secret right up front. There are more than 15 in my presentation. When I, was <laughs> when I started off, um, I was like, got 15. 15 will be good. If I can get 15, I've got a presentation. But we've got some more. And some of them are more personal. The first 15 tend to be more of the profession. And then after that, it starts to get a little bit wider that might not just be technical communication specific. So we, we ready? You guys want to jump in? Anyone still want to bail out and go see Doug? Because uh, it's, I mean, <laughs> pretty tempting. I hear he has a prize. I don't have anything. Um, didn't even have time to go get chocolates this morning. Dang it. So let's, let's start out. So number one, um, Give audio-visual feedback. So one of the things that I've seen done and I actually like is uh, if you give someone a, a document. Of course, we're used to getting comments and notes or red line back. But think about if you could actually just explain and show them uh, what you're talking about. We see actually educators are doing this with students. So that, you know, think about a teacher giving you the little marks and telling you, you know, th those are good and important. But they're doing that digitally. And then they're also explaining with a little bit more richness and depth. And the, the only thing it does is it really does save a, some time in terms of writing out. Um, and you can also expand the information. So that's one idea is give audio-visual feedback on something that's not necessarily a video. It works great for videos too. It works for lots of different things. Maybe it's a website and you can walk them through point by point by point. So there is a level of clarity that hopefully you can get out of, out of your video. So that's one use. Maybe not one you're going to use for in terms of a professional handed out to a customer facing but it can, internally it can be really a powerful tool. Number two, video is great for supplementing your documentation. I've actually had several conversations, and I think uh, uh, Rachel and I were even talking over breakfast this morning that you know, some people want everything to be video. I'm going to have to now peek over here. Just to, no, That's all right. Um, I'll, I guess I'll go look in the mirror. <coughs> um, so one of the things you can do is if you, your documentation maybe has holes or gaps, or maybe you purposely leave gaps, and video can fill that because... Maybe it does something that isn't great in documentation. It, maybe it can be either this higher level concep con conceptual thing, or maybe it is the very clear step-by-step. -step. And you have to think about your audience, but it, you don't have to do everything video, and you don't have to do everything written. You start to find a balance, because ultimately time and money are going to contribute to what you can do, um, and you have to make decisions. And 
I'll be honest, video is not probably going to come as easy as just writing a document. At least not at first. But it can really add a lot to it to really supplement and make your what you're already providing your customers a little bit more valuable. This is an obvious one. I feel like this is a this was a freebie I kind of had in my back pocket. Um, create short how tos. So my company we use video how tos all the time. Uh, in fact, for one of our products, Camtasia Studio, um, we have a help doc a help file that goes in the product. But on the tutorial side of things, or on the customer facing like on our website, we had we've elected to only use video tutorials. And the reason why is there was a couple. One is because we already like we already have all this written stuff that's in the help file. We don't want to just copy and paste that and put it on the web page and call it a tutorial. But what it does is we've got a very visual product. It is really helpful to see what all the timeline stuff does, all the tools do, do. and to show that in video, it, it works really well. Not to mention it's a showcase of the product because we use the product to make the product tutorials. It gets very meta for if you get too deep because you're using Camtasia, record Camtasia. But videos are make for great how-tos. One of the number one or best, uh, most popular types of content on YouTube, how-tos. And I'm gonna, I, look, I know most of us are probably not gonna go out to YouTube, uh, although it is the number two search engine and it is now um, more active users or I think it was comments and however they measured it, bigger than Facebook. So good chance your company has an audience there. And one of the great ways that you can make your mark is by saying, let's provide our information to our users. Maybe not. Maybe that doesn't work for your audience. I was thinking about a company that, uh, I've got a friend who's trying to convince me to go to uh, this, he works for an energy company. And I'm like, well, doing customer care. I'm like, ah, that doesn't sound necessarily that interesting because like, what are you going to put on Twitter? Power's out. <laughs> <laughs> you can't check this though because you have no power. Um, and so, but how to, it's that, that to me, that's a real value add is creating instructional content. And even though I think there's usually a divide, I know there was at TechSmith, instructional designers, uh, information developers who wrote the documentation, there's always a little gap. We see that now given just the way the industry has changed and staffing levels and things like that, they've got to wear both hats all the time. Capture your SME's knowledge. You're probably working with people who know stuff that you don't, especially if you're in a specialized industry. I worked for a while in the pharmaceutical industry with engineers. That was ma they were doing manufacturing. I worked with guys that were doing health and safety stuff. On this particular plant that we had that I was working on, they had this giant kiln. And in this kiln, they'd throw all the, the, the waste stuff that they couldn't normally dispose of. So sometimes it was chemicals. Sometimes it was these glass beakers that couldn't be cleaned well enough to be used for whatever purpose, which means... What kind of stuff were they putting in there? But it was really a serious endeavor. And I didn't know, I'm not an engineer. I'm, that was the last thing I ever thought I was gonna, would work with. So you can actually record, if you, can, you can use it to capture video. Maybe you're just using your mobile device, if they allow it. Use video to just capture the interview, capture the, the knowledge that they're giving you. Um, one guy I worked with who was doing water purification stuff. I didn't know about water purification. Purification. I know a lot now, um, but he had, he had training that he gave. He had slides. Have him run through those. He had a whole presentation. Capture that stuff and then translate it, boil it down to the, the key information. So actually use video to give uh, the SME an overview. Um, in some of the situations, we work remote, so or we work di from at a distance. You can actually create a video from your perspective to talk to the SME about what you're trying to do. So you don't always have to go in person, right? Especially, um, I would imagine as if you're a lone kind of author, you're doing contract roles and you're often working at home, this might be a great way to communicate back and forth rather than always having to, you know, do a Skype meeting or be in the, go into the office to visit with them. Those are good too and you want those, you want the, the real time, but maybe you want some asynchronous stuff. Hey, I was thinking about this, here's a couple ideas for you. So you can actually flip the role rather than capturing them they can get your information from you. Product and process overviews. Um, we do this a lot at TechSmith because we're, so we're, from a size perspective, we're about 300 people now. Most people work in a centralized office. There are several, probably 10 to 20 people who work remotely. Um, so we're pretty close, we can talk, but 
because we're getting to a size where it's really hard to know what's going on, uh, oftentimes the development teams will create a video. Here's a demo, here's, or here's an overview of what you need to know about this. So I'm working on a project right now. Um, I've, since I'm in marketing, I uh, used to be training, uh, and I haven't worked with the development teams really closely lately, but we're starting to do this thing where we're working with um, bringing messages from Twitter into the product, but they'll only be like t tips and tutorial type messages. Basically, it gives us a way to push some messaging, some uh, uh, kind of here, did you know about this kind of stuff, and update it and create new content that hopefully will be helpful to people. And I don't have a build that I could see how it looked, but the, the developers were actually making video to document and show us the process of how it, like what it looked like, what did the UI, how was it functioning, what were all the kind of things that we would expect to see once the build was done, but they didn't quite have ready. And I wasn't ready to install that, that really early alpha build and mess up my version of Snagit and then not have that to use. So uh, one of the things you can capture and, and you can use it for internal or external stuff as needed. Video voicemail. This is similar to maybe the working with the SMEs, uh, but you have an opportunity to create content. You can say, and here you go. Um, works pretty well. I've used this a lot with support customers. So someone will, will email us or maybe it's through social media and they don't leave me a phone number, so, and, and frankly, walking them through a, a visual process won't be a, a great use of my time on the phone. So I create what I call video, video voicemail, and I include it in the email back to them or in the, the social media posts, whatever it might be. Um, and it's like they get this voicemail at their convenience to open up, and they get to see exactly what I'm talking about. So if you're working with any kind of software, it's really a great, great way to do it. Or you can put yourself in the video, make that personal connection, make some eye contact with them on camera. Um, just be careful what you put in your voicemails. Uh, <laughs> what's on your screen? Don't do what Jennifer Lawrence did. We're, we'll keep referencing her all day. Um, just be mindful. But it is pretty useful. Um, and you can just create that asynchronous type of conversation. Whew. Seven down so far. Answering questions in advance. So I have a colleague. His name is Ryan. Ryan is a great guy. He used to teach at uh, a university in North Carolina. And he was teaching, he was working on his master's, doing these classes, and he found every semester that he taught this class that he'd always get the same questions. And so what he started to do is, just to respond, he did the video voicemail type of thing. But then he realized that those videos that he had crea already created actually would be answering questions people already had. So they didn't have to, they no longer had an email, Dear Mr. Aish, uh, could you please help me with the blah, 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 blah. He, he could say, okay, here's all the commonly asked questions I've got. And he, they would already have video. They could, they'd know it was from him. They could hear his voice. And it really made a, still connect, kept that personal connection with the, the, uh, the student, uh, but really allowed him to stop having to do, redo that work over and over again. Same idea as an FAQ. You can make visual F FAQ video walkthroughs, whatever it might be. Now, s could you do written ones? Sure. Think about the content and if video is really the best use for that content or not. Um, and then go from there. But you'll see that video, it works pretty well in this, in this scenario, especially when you want a personal connection. And that could be a personal connection as a company, not as it necessarily as an individual to, to a customer. Get customers to find you. How many of you are actually concerned about end customers finding your product or your company? Anyone? Re one? No one else cares? <laughs> you care, right? So why don't we care? Because, well, we're, we write technical documentation. Do you want your company to make money? No. <laughs> Do you want them to be successful? Yeah. Hopefully, no, I don't. <laughs> Hopefully you do to some degree, and I get there's varying levels of apathy because, you know, if, I have not worked for a, a gigantic company, but I can imagine at some level it's like, yeah, whatever, they're going to keep doing whatever they're doing. But your content that you're creating, whether written or video, is actually really useful. So one of the things we found with our tutorial stuff on TechSmith.com and they're starting to go through, we're starting to go through this overhaul. We're going to change the kind of the layout, make it hopefully easier for people to use. And the marketing SEO team is really freaked out right now. And they're really freaked out because that content makes a bulk of what, why Google thinks we're great on SEO. And all of a sudden you start messing with that and things get dicey. Your content is really important for that reason. It can help in that area. If your marketing team's not thinking that way, I'm sorry. 
I think that way, like, wow, this is great content. How do I, how do I leverage it and make it better and help, help everyone find this great stuff? Because better users make better customers, honestly. Um, video, YouTube. Again, it's the number two search engine. It's, it, you can take stuff that you're already creating and put it out there. It doesn't have to be real formal. YouTube, YouTubers, uh, as a rule, are you guys expecting the best quality, like cinema quality when you go to YouTube? No. So it doesn't have to be perfect, um, but it allows people to find your stuff. You put some meta tags in there. You put some information in there. Use, you know, if, if you're smart, you'll put captions in there. All that gets indexed by Google, and then it shows up. So a lot of executives, and there's been several studies about this, a lot of executives are actually using video to make decisions now. And so if some executive is making a decision about you or your product or your company, why not be there? And if your marketing team's not going to do it, okay, great. See, awesome opportunity for us. It is a little bit extra work, but you can put that stuff out there. And my guess is, for the most part, if you're doing anything publicly facing, I get, I get there's some industries where it's not going to be publicly facing, uh, secrets and all that good stuff. But it's a good opportunity to get found. And our profession can make that happen. Document easily forgot processes. So this is, this is actually something that um, my experience with this has been, our, we have a, our vice president of finance. He was talking to me one day about, you know, he's like, yeah, I use Camtasia once in a while. I was like, well, I'll help you use it if you need it. He's like, well, let me tell you about one thing I did. He said, in the U.S., there are, and maybe it's the same here, there's lots of tax things that a company has to do. And some of them are of an uh, infrequency that you don't really remember what it was that you had to do. You just know that it's due. And so he had this thing that was coming, I think, quarterly. He's like, I can never remember the exact steps and process to go through. He just couldn't remember what to do. And he said, I, it took me an hour every time to relearn and go through it. So he said, then I got smart. He made a video just for himself. He just documented this process. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, Don, here's what you're going to do. He talked to himself. Don, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, then you do this. And he didn't have to go back and relearn it every time. Sure, he has to keep up with tax code. He has to make sure nothing's changed. But he just saved himself that hour every quarter, every, you know, four times a year. And for, it took him hardly any time to make a video. Fairly disposable if something changed. It wasn't big cost. But it wasn't professional either. Just turned on a screen recording and went from there. So and you might have people in your organization that are having this problem. Um, uh, do I have this in here? I, I don't know if I have an... Oh, let me see if I have another... I have another thought about story about this, but I'll see if I've got it in, in here. Um, client handoffs. How many of you are loan technical author consultants? Do clients want to know what you're giving them? Do you, sometimes. <laughs> like, I don't care. They just, no. I just... I just take a ream of paper and put it on their desk and they're happy, right? I want to know that they know... Yeah. You want to you want to consult with them. You want to make sure that they're, it's clear to them that you've done a quality job. And so one of the things you can do is start giving over information. I've worked with vendors. In fact, we just updated Word, our WordPress blog, and we worked with a vendor to do it. Seemed everything was going smooth and great. And I was like, "Wow, you guys are really good. You're so awesome at communicating with me." And one of the things they said was, "Oh, don't worry. We've got everything documented in terms of how to do X, Y, and Z." Great. Oh, sweet. I love this. Implementation, payments done. Where's the documentation? Oh, it's there, so you gotta go here and here. Okay. Two paragraphs on this subject, one paragraph on this subject. Hardly any information about how to do some of the things that I really wanted to know. I'm just like, couldn't you have made me a video? Couldn't you have, I don't, write it out, I don't care, just do something. But their information could have been easily conveyed and he didn't have to take a lot of time. And I would have appreciated that from the vendor. So as you're doing this, think about, Okay, I want to hand this off to the next person. Techsmith were terrible about the kind of the walled, the walled approach. Let me throw that over to this other team. Done. Can't wipe my hands clean. Um, and video can be a supplement to that. Again, face to face is really important. It's good, but if you can, you can use this to again create avenues to communicate that maybe you wouldn't have used, um, and it can create conversations. It can create a way to say, "Yep, you have that. Watch that video, um, and go from there." So uh, we, uh, again, I'm speaking from TechSmith's experience. If you l work in a larger organization, there's lots of new people. I really like video as a way to introduce my team. And we've been doing a lot of this at TechSmith lately. Our tech support team just put together a video. Because who works in tech support? Uh, I don't know. Guys over in the dark dungeon. They, they keep all the lights off. And 
they really are, get mad if you turn the lights on. Um, it's very stereotypical. Um, but they're on the front line talking to our customers. Our developers actually really need to know them. They need to know who to go to. They need to know who to talk to about if they have questions. Um, and I want to know from a marketing side who might be answering the question. Who are these people? Now I happen to work with them, so I know most of them pretty well. Uh, but it's a great way to, to say, hey, this is our team. This is what we do. This is what we offer. So if you're a, and if you're a uh, kind of single author consultant, this is an opportunity for you to say, let me tell you about me. Let me show you what, talk about what I can do. And let me show you some of the work that I've done. And you can bring up in digital format, show off your work. So just another way you can, can use video. How are we doing on time? Okay. Whew. 25, uh, you know, I'm, we might end early. Uh, better tech support answers. I think it's pretty clear, uh, you know, you might have written answers, great. I love to be able to skim answers. A video is not everything, but sometimes it sure helps to show that full, you get just so much more context. It's so much richer when you can see the whole U, uh, the UI or interface or, you know, even in physical things, you can show off context about a part and, you know, what's around it. Um, and then you can actually walk through things. That's why I think YouTube how-tos are so important and so popular is because you can show me how to fix a pipe or do some drywall or whatever it might be, and there's a little bit more context there. But you have to think about what's going to go in it, too. Um, interaction previews or reviews. I sort of touched on this one before, but again, you can, you can show stuff off how it's going to work. Um, whether it's an interface and a program and a mobile app, it could be a website, um, or even it's just a mock-up. We do lots of mock-ups that never see the light of day, but it's a way to say, oh, well, here's what it's going to kind of look like. You know, the, you get the wireframe, and let me just show you, get a sense of how that's going to work. And that's sometimes really great, especially if you're in this iterative process where to take an hour out for a meeting every couple days would be too much, where you can send off our UX designers they can send off a quick video that shows in you know a minute or two where, where they're headed and then they can get some feedback and they'll still do like hallway testing they'll still try to work with customers to get feedback but just in kind of interim of working with internal stuff um, and in getting internal feedback it can streamline that process just a little bit usability testing on the cheap we have a product that will do full on usability stuff but I find that no one uses it because the level of complexity is really hard if you're not always in it or using it a lot I'm sure Rachel can tell you about the complexity of Moray so but what it's easy I'm sure uh, <laughs> but what you can do is you can just record people what they're doing I mean isn't that the idea is recapture their reactions and then you can go through and codify it and break it down and, and analyze what it was. You can record their face. Facial expressions say a lot. Some of you can see are not, you know, not, not in Doug Kim's, Kim's session. It must have been really full. Um, uh, but you can, so you can record the screen what, what, where they click. You can capture all this information. You can, if you set up a camera and they're using a physical object, you can do that with video and then use it for usability. You don't have to have the expensive suite or the lab or anything like that. It can be just really on the fly. In fact, we could do something where I just come and say, hey, could you, could you pull out your laptop? Well, let's, let's see what we're doing. Can you show me how you would do this? And then I've got it. And the trick is to do something with it. Yes, it's a little harder in that sense. But it really, video, it's, it's a great baseline to get some usability testing. And the great thing is if someone ever says, well, especially developers, I don't believe that. Say, ha ha, let me show you this person's frustration when they're searching for this term and they can't find anything. And do you know why they can't find anything? Because we haven't put it on the website. So you can actually show and really prove your point pretty well. Hopefully it's your point. It might disprove your point too. Capture key meetings. So, oh, I was at 15, we're at 15, should we stop? Or we actually I've got, like I said at the beginning, we've got more. So this is something that we've started doing at TechSmith. With 300 people, we don't have a conference room large enough to hold everybody. Um, so some of our meetings we actually will stream to other buildings because we have a series of like five small buildings. But important meetings we record because we always know someone's going to be absent and they're going to be like, well, what was said? And then it's going to be second or third hand passed on and that's never good. Um, it means it's archived, so we went through some reorganization stuff that happened. 
you bet we're going to want to go back and look at that. What was said? How was it communicated? What, or what was not communicated that should have been? And so it helps us to get better. But we capture those. And then later on, when we're creating, in my department, in the video department, we're creating historical pieces that talk about, you know, for birthday parties or we do an annual birthday party and we'll rev do a year in re review. We can pull from that. But there's never any question about what's said anymore because it, it was recorded. So that's, uh, it can be nice. And if you know you're going to be gone, I'm gone for 10 days. I'm sure I've missed a lot. But there's a couple meetings were recorded. So the joy is I get to go back and watch them and get caught up. Two times speed. Secret. Watch it twice as fast. Slow it down only when it's really important. Flip your meetings. Anyone know, heard of flipped classroom here, that concept? So this is something that happened in, in the States. It's a term. Um, and the idea of a flipped classroom is that you all know that you've got schoolwork and you've got homework, right? And you're in the class, you sit there, kind of like today, you're sitting here taking in information, you go home and you do your homework. That's how most schools work. The idea of a flipped classroom was uh, invented, I don't know if it invented, but pioneered and really brought to the forefront by two educators in Colorado. And what they decided was, is that with their information, they were, they were doing chemistry and physics that the time was best spent in class doing stuff or spending one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher, not lecturing. And so what they started doing was making videos and making those videos available in all sorts of formats so regardless of the kids' circumstances, they could watch it. Your homework was to go home and watch the lesson. Then to come in and work on labs. Have the hands-on experience when the teacher and when they could actually do it. And so schools, are, there's a, a school in de near Detroit, which, which is near, somewhat near where I am, um, and this school is failing. They were ready to shut the school down and have the kids go to other schools. And the, the principal of the school said, uh, look, we've got to do something. When it started with the freshman class, the ninth, grade, ninth graders or year nine, said, okay, everyone, we're going to go to this new model. This was an impoverished school. There were lots of questions about, well, how are they going to be able to watch this? They figured it out. They turned that school around. Test scores, which are big in the States as a measure, uh, went up. The school started performing better. They're being successful. This guy's been now featured on, in the New York Times, CNN, multiple other places because it was working. You can do the same thing with your meetings. Ever been to a boring meeting where you're like, why are you talking at me? Can we have a conversation? Probably. So send out the information. Do a short summary, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. Here's what you need to know. When we get in the meeting, let's spend our time actually being act doing something actionable. Let's talk about it, have the what questions you have, and then figure out what we're going to do. You can, you can save time that way. You'll also be more concise because you're going to spend le you're going to want to spend less time putting it into the video than you would if it's like just here talking. Um, so enhance outward facing communications. Video is cool. People like video. They want to watch video to some degree. Not everyone, of course, but it can just be a boost to what you're already doing. I'm going to start moving through these a little faster. Social media, if you're doing any kind of social media at your organization and if they're not taking advantage of what you are creating as technical communicators, they're messing up because you guys create lots of great stuff, especially if you start creating videos. I like it because I can say, we can schedule up tweets for a month in advance and we can say, oh, hey, here's a topic we've already got a, a video for. Why don't we just use that? Why create a new one? And people will watch it. Um, so get your, your marketing teams to take advantage of what they're creating. And it's, it's free content if you're already doing it. Cats! Everyone loves cats, right? Okay. <laughs> Never going to give you up. Um, look, videos are fun. You can have fun with your colleagues, especially if they get in the habit of you sending videos. You can Rick Everyone know what a Rickroll is? Anyone not know? Okay, so Rickrolling is the concept, and I can't remember who, I should have looked into the, the details because I can't remember. But Rick Astley has a video, Never Give You Up, was on YouTube. And p what you do is you disguise the link with a link shortener or whatever. And you ex explain, well, here's going to be this really process-oriented video. It's something that's, you know, not what it is. And they click on it and it starts playing, Never Going to Give You Up. So it's called Rick Rolling. It's been around for uh, 2008, 2009. It was a big rage to do and you still occasionally got to watch out. It was better than David Hasselhoff, though. Uh, <laughs> I've seen some of his videos. Woo. Product demos. Um, for customers, look, customers are looking at stuff all the time. They might not be looking when you're available. So why not show off what you can do and what you have? Um, and this could be internal customers too, right? It doesn't have to be all external. Your internal customers might not know what your department does. So why not give them a demo 
show off and talk about what you can do. Um, I don't know why I've got a car here, but I guess it makes cars you'd go out for demo driving or whatever. Um, but it, it really is handy to have that. And even in this type of situation, like if I was t talking about TechSmith software, there was a guy one time, and he was from Microsoft, so it wasn't TechSmith. I'm, I'm not quite this clever. And my colleague said it was the best presentation he'd ever seen. And he was animated, and he was going, and it's like, man, how is he doing the screen movements, so, like moving his mouse and clicking on things? He had created a video and timed himself and knew exactly the timing of what was on the screen, but he didn't have to think about the movements and clicking on things. Because if you've ever been up here, sometimes it's stressful, like, oh, I, did, I misclicked, now i got a right click instead of a left click, and things go crazy. Just record it. Or do small snippets. Pro tip. If you're ever pre doing a presentation and you're going to rely on the internet, bad, first of all, bad idea. You can make videos of what you're going to do so you can still show whatever you're going to demo. Record it at home, record the recording of your website, doing the actions. Um, it works really great. And sometimes it's better because, again, you can talk to what's going on on the screen versus trying to kind of function at two levels and do it, do it all. Staff updates. Uh, similar to the meetings, recording meetings, but we do a lot of this at TechSmith as well, where it's like, hey, let me give you a three-minute update on the KPIs for, for this month. Just keep them short, because we really railed against a guy that was doing 10-minute videos every week. Just too much time. Customer stories. If you're working with customers that can, are willing to tell you their story, why not use video to capture it? I've been, since I've been in the UK, I've worked with a uh, professional football team, St. Mirren's. Anyone know St. Mirren's in, in Glasgow? Uh, they bought a big LCD screen that's now in their stadium, and they're using Camtasia to create marketing content. I thought, that's cool. Let's go. Let's, we'll put that on the blog. I uh, worked with an educator in London, and it's some of the stuff that he's doing. So I interviewed just, it's going to be a very boring, kind of straightforward interview, but he's, he's an amazing guy. He's very positive. came across really well. So you can capture your customer stories to tell them. And those could be internal stories, internal wins, things that have gone well. Again, think broadly. It's not just uh, external customers. But tell those stories. Tell your own story. Record your webinars. They'll probably send you a recording anyway, but if you want to capture it and watch it immediately afterwards or can't make it, I, I never make the webinars that I sign up for. Um, but you can have a recording. Spice up your presentations. Wouldn't it be great if a video played right now? Given the internet situation, I wasn't going to risk it. I didn't have one prepared, but we could have, I could have easily put a video in here about any of this. I should have put Rick Astley, so we could have just danced, and that would have been great. But it can, it can add a little variety. If anyone was, at my, anyone was at my session last year, I actually had a spot in it where I took a break. I, video was playing. I was drink, drinking some water, and I was still talking to everybody. I just recorded it with my webcam. It wasn't hard. Use video to emphasize a point. If you want, you can, especially depending on what you're trying to convey, there's got to be great videos. There's going to be a video out there that's going to do something. Find the really the strange ones or the ones that are uh, interesting. Um, there's one about meetings and w what it's like to be on a voice, like if, you know, um, if you're remote in a meeting and it was all like, if everything was literal, like, oh, uh, you know, but everyone's there. Are you there, Joe? No? Uh, it's, I'll have to see if I can find it and tweet it out. But... You can make a pretty good point with videos, and you can use things that are symbolic. It doesn't have to be literal, this is what it is. You know, maybe we want to talk about how eating during meetings is rude, and we have a video that shows this guy chomping on a, a jelly donut or whatever. So, <laughs> a little self-promotion. So I'm just starting this um, since uh, about the last week. Uh, I've got 50 tips for video. Um, if you want to follow me, that's cool. If not... Um, I, I feel like it's just an extension of the things I'm already doing, uh, and I'd love to share those with you. That if you want 50 tips, they're going to be spread out over, so it's not going to be all at once. Some of them are going to repeat. Just I've got them scheduled up and start starting to go. But um, if anyone wants them separate, I do have a uh, I start, I have a web page, but it doesn't have a nice URL yet. So uh, if anyone really wants the 50 all-in-one dump, you can have that too. So, any questions, any thoughts, any, any other ideas I, I don't have? Yes? Oh, we need a microphone. You, can sing, you have to sing for us first, though. So. Your, your have, favorite Rick Astley song. Yeah. I normally use a hairbrush. <laughs> um, yeah, I want to go back to your comment about quality. And you said something about we don't expect the quality of videos on YouTube to be great. Um, we're just starting doing videos and animations, but... Um, we have no budget for 
specialist software. So at the moment, I'm doing animations in PowerPoint, which yep. doesn't okay. look very professional, but um, I work for IBM, and I think there's this um, perception, certainly for us internally, that what we should be putting out should look really professional and polished. So is it okay if I just put my hokey PowerPoint presentation on YouTube? I think there's a balance. Um, and I get there's the perception of IBM, you know, everything should, well, it's probably like, well, why don't you have budget? You're IBM, you're so big, right? If your content is really good, m most people can look past a, a few hokey things. They can look past maybe the lower quality, but the content has to be really good. And if you got that nailed, fine. You'll get better. You'll find other ways to compensate the animation or whatever it is you're trying to do. The other thing you might look at is, well, what else can I, like, does it have to be animation? Are there other things we can bring into this video that will then make it raise the kind of the level? But if you're just starting, look. I look back, so the first video I ever really made for TechSmith was my job interview. I applied, they said, hey, we'd love to talk to you, but oh, by the way, could you make a video for us? I'm like, uh, sure. I'm an instructional designer, I can do anything, right? Oh, I'll just learn it. They gave me Camtasia, I made a video, I made a, a second video for them, on my commentary video, I call it. It was like the, the director's cut, you know, I was trying to be like, oh, okay, they're gonna like this. I look at that video, I still have it. It was awful. <laughs> it was just, just terrible. It is the, I'm surprised I got hired, honestly. It was so bad. I went, actually, someone submitted a video to me, and I was hiring them, and it was that quality. I went out there myself. Uh, so I think start. You know what? It will get better. And in a year or two, yes, it will probably still be out on the internet. But who cares? Because they'll look at your next one, and it'll be probably be a lot better. Because you'll learn tricks, and you'll learn t different tools that you can use that low cost. Or, or eventually they'll say, this is really good. This is garnering some attention. Wow, we should give you something else. And there's lots of tools that you can spend a lot of money on. But keep it simple. So, any other questions, thoughts? Sorry, can I just interrupt this like one minute? Yeah. Okay, I'll be really quick. Okay. I feel like I'm not around. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm thinking about SEO and your problem. You, you, the guys worry about replacing content, but what are you doing about SEO in video compared with text? It's a different sort of challenge. The, it, it is, and it's, it's difficult, but there are um, sitemaps for video stuff that you can do. Um, a lot of it's thinking about what content do you build around the video. Um, if you're using YouTube, there's really a lot of advantages because Google does a, a wonderful job indexing that, surprisingly, um, to their advantage, right? Uh, but they build in things like, you know, because you got your title, you got your description, you got your tags, you got your captions, and all that stuff gets indexed. So, and then when you're all of a sudden you embed that content onto your website, and I'm not advocating that you use, always use YouTube, but that gets picked up. So there's a great blog I recommend called Real SEO, R E E L. SEO.com. It's all about video. It's about video marketing, but a lot of it's SEO stuff. The guy that started it, Mark Robertson, he was an SEO guy. And he's like, saw this opportunity that no one's talking about video. And it was hard. So that's what I look to for a lot of advice. And a lot of it ends up being about YouTube. But they are spreading, you know, they do talk some, you know, about these other video players. I haven't looked at Wistia, what they do. That's a really great video hosting platform. But um, most people, most companies will have taken into thought some of that, but if you're going kind of doing it on your own, you got to go out and learn about video site maps to start with and getting all that content in there. It's not easy. Real quick, because I know we're running out of time. We've got one more. Um, uh, just quickly, um, we're talking about uh, making like internal videos and sending them around to people. How do you practically do it? Do you email? Because video files are quite big, aren't they? Yep. So we're lucky we have a hosting site called screencast.com that we use, um, but you could honestly... If you really wanted to go on cheap YouTube, private video, or an unlisted video, so only people with the URL can find it. Of course, that's a security concern once somebody shares that URL. Um, but there's other video hosting sites that you can do. Um, if you use SharePoint, there's some ways that SharePoint can be upgraded, but you'd have to work with IT. You're right, they're big. Um, Dropbox or anything like it. So network, network storage drives work pretty well. Um, and then you just have to be thoughtful about like, the shelf life if it's not a permanent video. Can you delete it? That's, that's old. It doesn't need. We don't need it. So I think we're up. Time's up. Thank you very much. Can I just say thank you very much? I don't know. Do I need this? Thank you very much to, to Matt for bringing this dabble.